people, my people, my people, what is going on? It's the wealthy guy here with episode three of the My People podcast. And I'm very excited today because today I have a young brother on that is an entrepreneur. He got about, he, he ain't Jamaican though, <laughs> but he got a lot. <laughs> he has a lot of jobs and you know, just like the wealthy guy, and you know, I'm I'm happy to have him here today. We're both in Atlanta. Ironically. Ironically, Crazy. yep. So I came to Atlanta. I saw he was coming to Atlanta. It was like we have to link up. Um, but this guy that I have on today, like I said, he's an entrepreneur. He is out here, he is doing his thing for the men's footwear, I'm sure that if you are on Instagram, you have seen his product at some point because these shoes are so distinct and they have been getting a lot, a lot, a lot of press. So today on episode three of My People's Podcast, we have the Dr. Dapper. I don't have a, a clap thing yet. Say it ain't so. <laughs> <laughs> He's in the building. He's in the building. He's in the building. Um, so as I said, he's an entrepreneur, but we're going to get right into it. I'm going to let him introduce himself and tell you a little bit about himself. And I'm going to ask him some questions. He's going to ask me some questions. We just going to have a good time out here. That good sound good? Good, good little conversation. A all good little conversation. All good. All, all, all right. Who are you? So, government name, for all the people who don't know that, uh, Eric Jones is my, my government name. Uh, on Instagram, like you said, the Dr. Dapper, uh, founder and CEO of LFLS Shoes, uh, which is a designer dress shoe company I started while I was in college. Uh, started around 2014, 2015-ish is when I kind of like got the idea for it because uh, growing up poor and underrepresented, you know, I, I, had to, I thought that like, there's something else I could do. Right. You know, I, I saw my mom, you know, working two or three jobs, barely making ends meet. And I was like, man, what can I do uh, to get her out of her life and not have her life for myself, my future family, when I have a family and stuff right. like that. Uh, and then I became aware of generational wealth. And I was like, okay, entrepreneurship uh, popped in my head. You know, I didn't know what that was because right. coming from an underrepresented area, we didn't learn about stuff like that. Right. Um, but I kind of jumped on that. And um, I majored in fashion. Uh, I grew up in church. So my look, yep. dapper style, came from growing up in church. Can I stop uh, you for a second? Yeah, yeah. Can you sing? No, I can't sing. Oh, shoot. shit. I didn't, I didn't sing. Can you play tambourine? <laughs> Something. Play. <laughs> what, should, what can you do in the church? So I play the drums. In church. Okay, okay, yeah. perfect, perfect. Uh, yeah, you about to say something? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So what I want to I want to step back really quickly mm -hmm. um, because I want whoever's listening to really know, you know, about about the brand. So mm -hmm. the the initials for the shoes. Yeah, what what does it mean? Yeah. So when I first started the business, um, it, it's like father like son is like illegal. Like father like son. Ah. So that's uh, and people are like, oh, does your dad have shoes and all that? I was like, no. Uh, I want to have the same shoes for the father and the son. And that was like the first initial thing. Right. Uh, and then now women reached out like, oh, make some women's shoes. I right. Like that. So I didn't want to have like a masculine uh, like name when women get asked, oh, where'd you get your shoes from? Right. You know, they can just say LFLS. And then that allows me to, that opens the door for other things too, like LFLS right. furniture, LFLS ties, LFLS this right. and that in the future. So, uh, yeah. You know, this is the <clears throat> first time that I know what, it means. It, it means. Yeah, a lot of people ask all the time. Yeah, yeah. that was definitely the question. Like, one of the questions that I had, it was just mm -hmm. like, well, what does this actually mean? I'm mm -hmm. like, I know he ain't from Florida. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm that's like, what, what, what does this mean? So, so it's like father, like son. So mm -hmm. that's good to know. All right, go ahead, continue. Yeah. So, uh, and then, like I said, I dropped that to an acronym because I wanted to open up for more, you know, a variety of things that I could do through. Right. Life. Um, so where was that? I was at a church. So grew up yep. in church, stepdad was a pastor, mom was a first lady, <clears throat> played the drums in church, mom tried to keep me in a nice little suit or whatever she could afford. And, and that look just stuck with me over time as I grew older. Right. <clears throat> like I asked you, did you always wear suits and stuff? Yeah. They were like, yeah, you know, I have always had that look. So that's kind of where my look came from. Um, and I guess a deep part of my story <clears throat> is in 2010, my grandma passed. Yeah. Uh, and in 2013, when I got to college, my dad passed. Right. And in 2016, right before I graduated college, my mom passed. Uh, and I was so you mom. just, <clears throat> it was just a crazy time for you. Yeah. And it's like the three years, each three years, something that, that little, 
that that time span between you know each year, each three years or whatever is uh, it kind of starts to mean more to me every time three years comes. Like right. this year is like three years since my mom passed. So right. I feel like uh, a lot of people when I made the meme and started like blasting that because I'm always transparent. I share my story right. to inspire and motivate people. Um, but people are like, oh, it's gonna be a year of greatness. You know, I asked out like question marks for it. I put generational wealth. Uh, right. So actually, you know, manifesting and putting that into the air, like what I know is gonna happen. Uh, in this year, so right, each three years. So, this is a lit year for you. It's pretty, it's gonna be pretty lit. It's gonna be pretty lit. I'm excited about it. I'm on trend for a lot of things that I've been, you know, um, forecasting and yep. like putting into the universe. So, taking a leap of faith to LA. Uh, so, a lot, yep. of, a lot of big things are happening. That moment. is a big move, it's huge. Like, that is a big yeah, move real big. <laughs> because you are originally from Arkansas, Arkansas, the woods too, like southeast, like, like in the country. In the in the cut in yeah. in the back in the country yeah in the back. um like <laughs> New York I mean New York has one vibe L A has an, a a totally different vibe mm-hmm. I've actually surprisingly enough I've been to a lot of places I've never been to L A you gotta come you gotta come yo when you go to if you <laughs> that's why you feel like you only you know you're a New Yorker you right. gotta say it. You go to LA, like, right, because Corey, uh, actually, the Attorney General, right. he's a New York guy. He wants to go to New York. Right. And of course, he said he'll live in LA with me for like a year or two, then he'll go to New York. But right. when he came to LA for the first time, he was like, yo, this is this, this is it. This is but but you know, what, what's interesting about that, when people go to a place for the first time and they're yeah. in love with it, like we're in Atlanta right now. Mm-hmm. I remember there was when I first came to Atlanta, I'm like, this is nice. Yeah. I want to live down here. <laughs> and a lot of people do that, right? Uh-huh. A lot of people do that. But then you have to kind of get your head out the clouds and be like, look at the real aspect of it, right? Mm-hmm. So I'm a native New Yorker. I don't like to drive. I don't want to drive. I like mm-hmm. to get around easily. This is not the best place yeah, for me unless yeah. I lived like downtown or somewhere where I could like walk mm-hmm. everywhere or, or use the public trance and get around. But I'm like, no, every time I love coming to Atlanta, but I'm like, I couldn't live here because you got to drive everywhere. I love driving. And they growing up in Arkansas, we drive. Like, you know, everywhere. like yesterday I uh, walked to Walmart. So yeah. I had to actually cross the <laughs> from where <laughs> not me in a suit <laughs> i didn't have on a suit though i had on um i had on my uh i had on a t-shirt and jeans but i promise you when i tell you i was sweating <laughs> well, i sweat yeah so i i gotta be in the car ac right <laughs> i was sweating so badly but it's actually less than half a mile away and people who i told that i walked to walmart yesterday they're like what why would you why would you not just take an uber and i'm like i'm from new york it is not a it's it's a short distance from where i'm staying to the walmart i might as well walk like Mm -hmm. to me it's less efficient to call an uber wait for the uber just to take the uber literally down the street yeah you know so i was like i'll just walk but People down here can't fathom the fact that I walked, you know, <laughs> d- yeah, down, down to the Walmart. But I thought it was fine, except when I was coming back carrying those bags. Yeah, you I was like, the Uber. <laughs> <laughs> this is that's nuts. Nice. But yeah, but no, that's that's exciting. Mm-hmm. And that is a big, like, leap of faith. Huge, bro. Second, the second biggest I've taken. I've taken a lot, but that's the second, like, biggest one right you know i've taken and because it's not it's, it's i wouldn't say it's the biggest but it's close because the first one was me going full-time right immediately after college not working for anybody and struggling right. that first i struggled that very hard i was in a very dark place we're like, off a very dark place. listen yeah. can, but yeah. can we talk about it right because i think that a lot of times we share our successes yeah a lot of people right and most times people see the successes, right? Like the other day I like post, I was on the news, everybody's like, Oh, that's great, you're mm-hmm. doing you doing big things. But what they don't see is the times where your money is really low. It's real and tight. You, and you don't get no sale. And uh-huh. it's like, oh damn, I need to eat. Yeah. And I need I I gotta pay my, my cell phone bill. Uh-huh. And I gotta you know, I gotta pay all of these things and nobody's buying anything. Exactly. You know, and you like wanna give up, you wanna get mm-hmm. a jet but you like this is your this is your your dream this is this is your baby mm-hmm. you know like you I the way I feel about it is like I have to see it through yeah you have to especially if you have like a like I always say passion purpose product and once you have like passion or purpose behind something right. you definitely and it, and it means more than just oh I'm trying to get money you know I, I definitely right. always tell people 
you know, never going to something just looking to get money out of this because you wouldn't quit your good job to go do suits just because, oh, I'm about to get into, into it for the money. Because right. you know damn well that amount of money ain't going to come from suits like off rip like that. Exactly. You know? so, exactly. so you definitely have to have a, a, a bigger purpose. And I feel like my mom, you know, investing so much into it with, with nothing. She had any, she didn't have anything. And then her not being able to be here, you know, to actually physically see me or see her wear my women's shoes or anything right. like that. You know, it, it, and then even, you know, starting generational wealth, uh, educating our community on, on that or supporting right. black owned businesses and uh, switching the narrative, like trying to see more men dapper and suited up. And like, right. just, there's so many different movements and purposes and pieces behind my business that, you know, if I quit, I'm not quitting on myself. I'm quitting on you, my mom, right. my ancestors, my future family, right. the, like the thousands of people that watch and, you know, support me right. and, and cheer me on. So it, it definitely becomes something bigger than just, than just you. So, right. Yeah. So let me ask you, where did the, the, the name, the Dr. Dapper come from? Yeah, that's a good question. Yeah. <laughs> All the good questions. Listen, you know what I'm saying? Listen, I'm one, I'm one. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, Dr. Dapper, so I was in, when I got to college, uh, my style, of course, was different from a lot of people's because right. people wore like just jeans and sneakers and big t-shirts or whatever. Right. And um, I was always tucked in, you know, kind of like nice little pants, dress shoes and stuff like that. And people were like, oh man, I love your style. Like, I wish you know, I could dress like that. Can you, right. help me? Can you help me, you know, dress better or dress like you? Right. And, you know, and I looked at them like, oh, something was wrong with their style. So they right. need help. So if something's wrong with your health. Uh, you go to a doctor to get assistance with your health. Right. So if something's wrong with somebody's closet, I was like, oh, they're getting me for assistance with that. Right. So I just like doctor and dapper. dapper. I just connected the two, like a doctor, if you go to the doctor for your health. Right. Or, you know, you, you style, go, so. so you the doctor. That, that's clever. Yeah, so it's pretty that's clever. clever. It's, 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 it's always good to, to hear how... Uh, things come like names come about, mm -hmm. right? Because people are like, where did the wealthy guy? I was about to ask come you. I was about to ask you where. Yeah. Like, uh, so when I, you know, first started the coats, it was like, okay, I want something that is sounds rich, but not <laughs> not the rich guy. You yeah. know, I didn't want it to be like, even though wealthy guy is still overt, I didn't want it to be like the rich guy. So I like started going through the dictionary and like. Uh, looking for words that were associated with money and, and wealth and like affluence and just playing with different things. And then I got to wealthy and the definition of it. But, you know, in a dictionary, it shows you the phonetic of it, right? Like how to how to say it. Mm -hmm. So it was like the W-E-L-T-H-E -E with, with the accent. And I was like, that's, that's it. it. But it took a very long time for people to understand what it was right even still now people don't understand it it's the phonetic of of wealth of wealthy mm. w-e-a-l-t-h-y mm. right so people be like the wealth guy right they see the w-e-l-t-h oh, yeah, yeah. but they don't they don't pronounce the e with the accent yeah. e right wealthy so it took a, a long time for people to <clears throat> even now still people be like the wealth guy, and it's like no, the wealthy guy. Look wealthy, at the, get, get the rest of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, but what what I what um, I think is very cool is, and and a lot of people don't notice about the wealthy guy because I'm always dressed up, mm -hmm. right? So I'm sitting here across from you. I see. So you like the dapper, the the doctor dapper trap version because you got. <laughs> I, I swear to God, look when I take off my suit. And then people see my muscles and they see the tattoos. Right. They're like, they're like oh, because I got tattoos all the way around. Right. But it's tattoos. funny because I have nine tattoos. Yeah. Right? Look. Nine, I have nine Tech, tattoos. The tattoo guy. Uh, <laughs> and not not only that, uh, a lot of guys that I, I, I you know, know of now on Instagram, they, they, they have tattoos. Mm -hmm. And when you traditionally think about someone uh, being dapper... Yeah. You don't think about that. Tattoos or piercings or other right, stuff. Right, right. Yeah. But today is a new a new day, mm -hmm. right? And it's like, you can have that in look like this. Yeah. Yeah. Like, one doesn't, that's, that doesn't cancel out the other. It's, no. this is, it's you. Yeah, that's who yeah. you are. Every, everybody's yeah. unique. So, I mean, if you, if you want tattoos, if you want piercings, and you still want to be that dapper guy, you know, by all means, you can definitely do that. You know, right. and, and don't let corporate hold you to a certain standard either. That's why, like, you know, we have the free will to do as we please with, you know, whether it's our body or whatever, you know, right. we, we, for our own, like, boss. So, right. Yeah. So I, I have a, another question for you. So 
with the design of your shoe, mm -hmm. right? The gold. Tell me about the gold. I mean, I don't know. It's just the gold. So I start. I, I first started with without the gold. So it was yeah. just the zipper on the back, which mm -hmm. is my unique feature mm -hmm. uh, that I added on the men's loafer. I never saw anybody do that. Uh, so it's a non-functional feature that I added. And then after I released, uh, I re-released the, the shoes because I went through a hard part with like the, the, the agent I was working through. The shoes came in lower quality, defected. And they fit narrow and stuff like that. So I ended up throwing away 60 pair of shoes. Oh, uh, yeah. I was in that first year, I was like, ass out. Yeah, you want to terrible. fight somebody. <clears throat> it was, you yeah, want to I fight still, him. I still, I still want to pull up. <laughs> I swear to God, I was going to come to me. It's in New York. You probably know who it is. Well, give me the name. I'm Modern Vice. Give me the name on the thing. And I don't, I don't care. I swear to God, when I get on, when I get on national TV again, when I'm on like a large platform, I'm dropping you, names. This is. I swear to God, because they. They screwed me over, and they, oh, they were wrong for that. Man. You know, they overcharged me for stuff. Right. A lot of different things, but that that fact they reached out to me directly, and right. we've been working, um, you know, together. But it was it was like a slow process getting to it because I was hesitant because <clears throat> I thought I got screwed over with that. Right. I'm you like, was yeah, nervous. Let me, let me let me. I'm kind. Of, I'm like strict about everything. I'm like, yo, let me make sure this is good because I don't want to get screwed over. Uh, but the gold tip came after. I had released the shoes and it was like just a solid color. And mm -hmm. then I was like, Let me see what a gold tip looks like on it, mm -hmm. and that shit popped. Uh, right. was like, I was like, man, the gold tip is nice. Right. You really see a lot of a lot of shoes now with, with, with gold that. Tips. That's that's gold why I, I I say that you know like in the introduction that the shoe is very unique. Mm -hmm. I've only seen that shoe like 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 that, and, mm -hmm. and long before I knew of you. I knew of the shoe. Yeah. You know, I sold the shoe everywhere and mm -hmm. people would send me uh, you know, in like, DM or whatever. Look at these shoes. <laughs> yeah, look at these shoes. Yeah. So, you know, clearly you got something right. Yeah, and it's and it's crazy, like like in the beginning, you know, I tried to go broad to kinda like capture everybody to see right. where the brand would go. Uh, but understanding is like there are some conservative men, because I consider you more conservative, yes. not about to wear like flashy, like go right. to shoes. You more like the monk or the loafer, like the brown, right. the uh, normal loafer. But you know, just understanding what occasion my shoes are meant for, which shoes sell, you know, who my customer is, and then not not being upset or feeling some type of way if somebody sends you the shoe, you're like, oh, or you just look at it like, oh, that's not for me. Right. That, that's something too that a lot of people can't understand that you know that specific style of shoe isn't for. Yes, everybody, you know? yes, mm -hmm. yes. That I think that is a very good point that you yeah. bring up because even like what my coats. I understand that that coat is not for every man, mm -hmm. and men tell me all the time, I, I, it looks great on you. I love the way it looks, but this is not something that I would wear, and that is okay. You can't be you can't be discouraged. You think you don't have a yeah, good product. Yeah, that is okay. Yeah, yeah, I you know it's for a certain type of man. Mm -hmm. That is okay. Most things are for certain you know yeah. like certain markets. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. certain markets. So it's you know it's okay when someone is like oh. That's that's not for me. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, but no, I thought that, you know, that was very clever. You know, the zipper on the back is it's different. It's, it's different. It's definitely different. different. You know, if it was functional, I could see people zippering it down and turning it yeah. into some type of slide. <laughs> Let me slide my foot in here. You see that thing right there? Just, just heels just <laughs> just out, you know? Yeah. So definitely, um, I can see people, you know, zip zipping it. Somebody gonna zip it down, yeah, you know. Yeah, like people, people be, and in the beginning when I first did it, people were like, I was scared people would break it, and right? I, and I had to put, I had put, I started putting a note in there, but but now it's in the description of the website. You know, if you if you don't read the description, right? You just unzip it, it's like you you did the shit yourself, right? Right, 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 yeah. But uh, but definitely, yeah, people, I was scared about that in the beginning, but. Yeah, 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 it's still yeah. going. So, uh, so I had a question for you too. All right, uh, I was gonna ask a little bit about production since mm -hmm. I had like a hard time getting my production going. Yeah, like, getting connected with a factory. Uh, did you find that kind of difficult yourself, or did you go through like a blessing and a curse phase where you got <sighs> screwed over with like some fabric, or you had to? I mean, you're always learning, but you know, yeah. how was that getting connected with your? Yeah, so family? so uh, for the coats, I've used the same factory uh, since. It became a custom product, okay. and the begin. So the the factory was a referral from a friend who uh, runs the custom suiting business. Okay. So that was good, right? Because it was a referral for someone who had been using them. His stuff was good, right? Um, but the thing about it was, anytime that you are building 
uh, or doing business with a company outside of the U.S. and there's that language barrier mm -hmm. uh, as well as <clears throat> cultural uh, differences, yeah. you have to find that balance of how to work with that person. Mm -hmm. And I struggled, even though I, because I lived in Hong Kong uh, for almost three years, I also lived in mainland China. So I'm familiar with Asia and I'm familiar with China. But still, the building of that relationship at first was very difficult. Mm -hmm. Like, there was a lot of miscommunication and misunderstandings mm -hmm. that led to mistakes. Um, and what I've learned over time, because now I've, you know, the, the, the factory that I use for the suits, I'm experiencing the same thing mm. but it's the beginning of the relationship growing pains until we learn how to work with each other yeah, yeah. right let let me um help you help me mm -hmm. type of thing <laughs> yeah. you know like mm -hmm. let me help you help me and that's really what i do so now i put uh you know kind of quality checks in in place mm -hmm. in terms of working with them to try to ensure that what I say I want is what I get. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> right. You know, because the thing about uh, working with a foreign factory, too, is that they are very literal. So what, there's no, they, they don't interpret stuff. Mm -hmm. Like it's whatever they see there and how they think that it's, it's written or whatever. And that's how it is. And you'd be like, well... You know, so for example, when I first started doing the suits, right? So we live in, in now people like their trousers very tapered at the bottom, mm -hmm. like a six inch uh, cup, right? Or 12 inches around. Yeah. And, you know, on, on, the, on the measurement form, I was putting, you know, six inches and the pants were coming back and they were like 14.75, which is standard. Mm. And I said, why, why are you, you know, why, why, well, now I'm having to invest more money to get the pants altered myself. Mm -hmm. The form says six inches. Why do you keep doing this? So for, I promise you for like two or three months, I was going back and forth with them. <laughs> and she's like, she didn't have no, she didn't have an answer for me. And then I escalated it to the, um, to her manager, yeah. you know? And I didn't want to do that, but I was like, nah, this is ridiculous. Yeah. So I escalated it to the manager and the manager came right in and, and clarified it. The manager was just like, okay, if you want it to be, you know, six inches or 12 inches around, just put 12 finish size. Yeah, that's what, that's what I was, I was actually talking to one of my homies back home about that, whether it was finish or if it was, uh, Right, body size. Body size, like body finish size to yeah, finish yeah. size. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So once I started putting, you know, finish size, then it was fine. And then now they also have a online system. So mm -hmm. everything goes in online as well as like now I take pictures of all my clients, yeah. right? The front, the back, the side, so that they can see. So whatever they asking me for, I'm giving them. Yeah. And, you know, we'll see, but... Let side note though. <laughs> side note though. Side so note. <laughs> side note, side note, side note. Side note. So <laughs> next Saturday is uh the indie fashion gala, right? And the wealthy brand is nominated for best men's tailoring. Next level. Next Congratulations. Level. Thank you. And what? But that that's big. But this is this is what's even bigger. Wait a minute. There's, my, there's more. There's more. There's more. <laughs> this is my suit. You know, cause I gotta step on the red carpet. Oh, you gotta be fresh. Right. Next level. You gotta be next. Right. Level. Right. <laughs> so I gotta be fresh on the red carpet with something new. So I've designed me a new suit. That is. I'm gonna wear it. Right, right. That I'm gonna wear for the first time to the gala. But 
I'm nervous. And I don't really want to put this out there because some you know when things you speak come come to fruition. Like, so you have to be very that. careful about so actually no, I ain't gonna put it out I there. I ain't gonna even say it. So <laughs> my suit is gonna come on time. It's gonna be great. It's gonna fit exactly how I want it to fit. And they're gonna need body bags at the gallery. They're gonna need body bags. Because when I walk in, <laughs> put them in the car. Be, put, put them in the car. Dropping dead. <laughs> dropping dead. <laughs> <laughs> dropping dead. Oh, Just dropping level. dead. That's next level. Um. So yeah. So that's my experience. It's it's a learning experience. Mm. Um. But just like anything, right? You 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 know started working with that one that that one person and it ain't work out right. Now you found somebody else, and you probably found somebody else. The yeah after yeah, them. I, I plan on it. Yeah, because you, know, you always want to continue to elevate your business, and if you, if that means connecting with a, a higher quality or right, you know, a manufacturer, then that's that's where you take it. But but definitely, it's just it's a process. And you got to appreciate where you are in that process and know that your current uh, situation isn't your final destination. Right. So, you know, looking at my product right now, I'm, I'm, I'm satisfied. I'm happy with it. But I know where I want to be, you know, uh, right. in the next year, two years. Right. Like that. Yeah. So, you know, I think just, just, yeah, just keep with it. But what is, what is, if, th- if this is a secret, you don't have to answer. But I was going to say, what's your next your next product or is it just <clears throat> focus on the shoes push the shoes push the shoes push the, you know push the shoes until they really uh yeah. kind of like pop it's because really- sometimes that's what really makes sense sometimes mm-hmm. people start putting out a whole bunch of products too fast yeah and i know what i can afford to do i can't afford to do a lot right you know so really focusing on that so i've since i've discovered which shoes sell the best which occasions like weddings games proms right graduation since i like i understand that <clears throat> really investing in that and hitting that real hard, like until the business does pop, until I get that one person at the right place, the right time, right. you know, rocking them or whatever that situation may be that allows the brand to pop. Uh, right. right. I, I believe in you know focusing on a, on a niche product and then building a, a brand or a business to where you can like slap that name on anything. Uh, right. Kind of like Louis Vuitton did. They started with like totes, I think, the stack. Right. And that's all they did. And now you can slap Louis Vuitton on a condom. Right, pay and somebody, if not more, <laughs> and, yeah, and more. So it's, right. it's just like that, you know. I really, I know what I can afford to do, can't afford to do a lot, and um, you know, I, I have a hundred percent of my business right now. Right, so I'm bootstrapping. Uh, right, but you know, I'm I'm satisfied with where I'm headed, and I see, you know, the, uh, I see, I see greatness for it. If right. I continue to, you know, yep. focus on what I'm focusing on right now. Oh yeah, Which oh for cheap. sure, because it's already made a splash. You know, splash, like, splish, splash. Splash. <laughs> splish, it's splash. already made a splash, you know, like when you see it, you know, that that's, you know, like, yeah. that that's it's what it is. Too. It's crazy. Cause I was in the club last night actually. Mm-hmm. And I, and it's, it, it just shows how much bigger, like I'm becoming as a person in my right. moment and then the business, the shoes are as well. Um, I was walking through from the restroom and this guy was like, you that dude. You sell shoes with the you? shoes, and I was like, yeah, yeah. He was like, he was like, big, big. Take this picture. This is the dude I be buying the shoes from. So right. just like, just seeing that, the excitement, and just, oh, yeah. and just um, you know, anywhere I travel, I, I do hand deliveries for people, right? And being very personable with my client, my like, I call them family members. You say that, yeah. I say right? Yeah, family. my people. Uh, yeah. So yeah, it's it's pretty dope to to start from nothing, like shit, and right. then build like build something is, that has value, holds like value to other people. Or they, right, yeah, they and when they too. see you, they're like. It's you. Yeah, and it's like you're not you just know? some like other person. You right, know, like, right. And and, and that's love and it's it's so many things. It's love, it's respect, and it like right, really right. makes you feel like, okay, I'm doing something. You keep going. Right. Yes. That small things I like that. Keep keep going. Going. Yeah. I because swear. sometimes yeah. when but sometimes, you know, when people uh I I'm going wherever and people recognize me, like you're the wealthy guy. Nine times out of ten, I'm looking crazy. <laughs> I try to be suited up all the time. I'm sweating. I just walked from the house to Walmart. And- Nine times out of ten, I'm looking crazy. Like I just ran to go wherever real quick. Mm-hmm. You know, the beard needs a rebleaching, <laughs> and then it's re-bleaching. like, yeah. you're it's, it's you do oh, and I'm like, but I just go with it, you know, because I'm a real person mm-hmm. and I don't look. All like this all the time. All the time yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. This, this in between times. Yeah. you know. 
There's in between times where I'm like looking crazy. Yeah. <laughs> and then people, people got to understand it. You know, uh, got to have to understand how to be like transparent right. and vulnerable and not try to, you know, be somebody they aren't. Like you know, because the social right. media gives like it's a it's a it's a um, what is the word I'm looking for? I don't know. But it's it's like it's a role of your best moments. Like it's, it's right. your best moments. Right. Yeah. People don't show them looking crazy yeah. Yeah, yeah. but I think that it's important to show you looking crazy mm-hmm. you know like so sometimes I'll do videos where I do need a re-bleaching mm-hmm. or where my hair is growing mm-hmm. out and I'm looking crazy yeah it's how I look they want to know you're like a real person right they know you're real yeah person, so like know. right now you know what I'm sitting what what's on my feet right yeah. now but <laughs> In all the videos, watch out. <laughs> Slides. <laughs> um, but yeah, but you know, most of the videos I do, you don't see my feet, yeah. so they don't really matter though, huh? It yeah. don't matter. Yeah, but it's funny because sometimes people will say, Oh, I like that suit or whatever, you put it together nicely. What you got on your feet? <laughs> and I'll be honest. I'll tell them Nike slides. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how you play it. <laughs> no, I'm not I got on Nike slides. <laughs> So, so yeah, so I believe that, yeah, just, just, I don't want to, like, yeah, I'm not going to sell a dream. I work from home mostly, mm-hmm. and if, when it's time for me to do a video, it doesn't necessarily make sense for me to put on shoes, especially if you're only going to see three quarters of my body, yeah. you know? Like, of course, if I'm going to take pictures outside of whatever, I'm going to put on my, my full look, but... Mm-hmm. If I'm making a video where you could see, you know, my waist up or whatever, I'm gonna have on my comfortable shoes. Yeah. Yeah. So and my comfortable shoes just happen to be Nike slides. Nike slides. Yes. <laughs> Nike slides. And that's what I have on right now. With this full ass suit. Full, full ass suit and the pocket square with the top. <laughs> um, but yeah, so you're gonna keep building the brand mm, and then you have like all of these other things going on, right? Mm-hmm. Like you help people with branding, yeah. you help people with marketing their business, mm-hmm. you help people with strategy. You you have all of these other things mm-hmm. that that you do. You know, I'm actually I'm not gonna ask this question. What I was gonna ask you was So you asked me. I know no, no, no. <laughs> I'm not gonna ask you. I'm gonna tell you what I was gonna ask, but because I don't like when people ask it of me because I'm like, well, I don't even know. When people be like, where you see yourself in five years? You know, people no, do that. I don't know. I don't know. I always tell people I don't I don't I don't have anything set like specifically on that five, ten years because that can happen next month, next right. six months or whatever, you know. Right. Because I wanna of course I wanna reach a billionaire I wanna be a billionaire and right. have all those things and everything like that. Uh, but that could happen at the end of the year, you know, and I'm not, right. I'm not going to limit that or set that too far out from happening, you know, right, right now. Yeah. So. Yeah. So I don't know. I'm, I am, don't get me wrong. Yes. I look to the future mm-hmm. and a lot of my strategies are looking to the future. Mm-hmm. But in five years, like, honestly, I didn't, two years ago when I started this business, or if I look back three years I would have never thought that I'd be sitting here with you right now doing a podcast. Bro, it's a lot of stuff that I didn't mean. like, like, cause I, I went full time December 2016. So 2017, bro, if you, if I look back to that time, that whole year, and that's why I always tell people like, whatever the fuck you want to do, like go do it right. right now. Like don't, there is no perfect time. You'll never know everything you need to know, you know, to like just start. Cause some people are like, oh, I need to know this. I need to know that. I need right. to put this in the right place. I can make some extra money. It's like, no, if you, if you have like, if there's a will, there's a way. So definitely take that leap of faith. Right. And go for it uh, because 2017 compared to 2019, night, totally, like, yeah, like totally pitch different. black night compared to like bright daylight. I swear to yeah, God. Yeah, totally it's, different. It's, it's, it's ridiculous. Yeah, yeah, I would have never thought that I would be making videos on Instagram. Yeah. Like you, and then you, and you wouldn't, you probably, your mind, like the, the growth that you had between then and now, you back then, you probably wouldn't even thought that a video on Instagram would help you get like clients or right. anything. So it definitely, your mind changes so much within months and oh yeah oh yeah no when i first started my strategy was very different i'm like i'm gonna do a blog and very quickly i was just like "Mm -mm." i'm not gonna do it i'm like first of all people (laughs) don't even really read yeah nobody read yeah nobody read they do not even read i'm like it's videos people like to watch stuff and listen and hear i'm I'm more of like a hands-on person i like sitting 
and they're learning because like some people right. have to sit down and read a book and i feel like uh this is like for people that might be different uh type of learners you know? right uh i'm more of a type to sit down with a millionaire versus read a book that a millionaire has written to kind of tell you like oh these are my five steps for doing right i want to sit oh, yeah. and talk to oh yeah them. oh yeah that is that obviously is much more valuable hearing it from the person's like mouth and even not even a person that didn't write a book about it but a person that's been through that process and i and i remember and i apply stuff better from hearing it or like going through it like right. trial and error or stuff like that you know but everybody's different some people can read a book and and do perfectly fine but me, right. i have to like sit and learn from people like yourself right or go through it myself yeah you know? i mean i think you know you are absolutely killing it i appreciate it we, we, know, we are killing it, it. We, we, we are, are killing, killing it. it we're killing it i want to give you your moment separate you know <laughs> the light and then the light shines down on air <laughs> Uh, I want to give you your moment separate, uh-huh. but I absolutely think that you are killing it. And you know, what I know is that, uh, and when you watch somebody, you'll see them try things, mm-hmm. you see their journey, you know? So that's why I always say like, you know, who your followers, fans and supporters are. Mm-hmm. Right, your your fans and your followers, those are probably the most fickle, right? Because you do something that they don't like, they are gonna leave you. Right. right, but your supporters, they're gonna be there through your good content, your bad content, mm-hmm. you trying different things, trying to see what works. They're gonna support you throughout yeah. that entire time. They're not gonna abandon you, mm-hmm. like, you know, like a fan mm-hmm. or you know, um, like a follower. So. Keep doing your thing. I appreciate it. You know, because you drove how many hours to get here? Like, nine, like nine, nine hours. hours. Not, not, to the, not, to, not to just be on the podcast. Not to just be on the podcast. I was here. This made it happen. But I'm All always, right. I'm always hustling, man. And then I, if I can't afford to take a flight, I'm definitely hopping behind the wheel and making stuff happen because you know, to me, most of the people I meet up with are older than me too. Right. So I definitely. Right. Uh, gain a lot of wisdom and insight on things because I'm 23. Right, right. right. And you're yeah. Like, oh, you're 23 for real? Yeah, so, yeah. So, but definitely. you would never know that <clears throat> by yeah. your the way that you carry yourself mm-hmm. and like, yeah, the fact that you like are building this this business. Mm-hmm. Um, and is and is you know it's 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 out there. So what I want you to do now is, you know, tell people where they can find you. Mm-hmm. Where they can find your you, where they can find your products. Them shoes, huh? Them, sh- them, them shoes. shoes. <laughs> them shoes. <laughs> but no, you can, uh, my personal page on Instagram is at the, so T H E, Dr. Dapper, you spell out doctor. Uh, and then my company's Instagram is L F L S Shoes. Uh, company website, www.lflsshoes.com. And that's where yes. you can find it. So I appreciate you. I, it was, a pleasure for me to link up with you. We had a lot of good laughs today. You got to see the whole behind the scenes. Hey, it's lit. It's really lit. When they say it's lit, it's lit. Lights, camera, action, live. Yes, you got to really see how I move behind the scenes. You know, and a, a lot That's of people the beauty don't. Too. Yeah, a lot of people yeah. don't realize how much work goes mm-hmm. into the stuff that we do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Real. They a don't realize how much work goes into it. So now. We about to close this. Mm-hmm. We about to get into the next thing. Hold yeah. on. <laughs> we got some fire coming for the grizzly. You know what I'm saying? Come. Watch out. It's going to be lit. <laughs> right. Right. Um, <clears throat> so, yes. So, the Dr. Dapper in the building with the wealthy guy. It's been a pleasure. Thank you for sitting in. Thank you for having on me. On episode three of the My People podcast. And yeah, one day we gonna sit back and we gonna on a private jet. Yeah, yeah, hey, hey, what hey, we got? Time. Hey, fly in real quick. You'll yeah, get flew it out. <laughs> right, <laughs> right. Where? Right, exactly. And we're gonna remember this time. Yeah. So yeah. appreciate you. Thank you for coming. And I look for much more greatness. Like from you. Likewise. Yes. We're gonna be great. All right. Support black owned business. Support black owned business. So my people, my people. It's been episode three of the My People podcast with the Dr. Dapper. It's the wealthy guy, and I'll see you soon.